We begin our Savior's worship service today in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. rise. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, begging him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And thou forgivest the iniquity of my sin. Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess to thee all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended thee, and justly deserve thy temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them, and I pray thee of thy boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of thy beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, 
a poor sinful being. On your confession, and by virtue of my office, as a called and ordained servant of the word, I announce the grace of God unto all of you. In the stead and by the command and authority of the command of our Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice. You have been my help. Do not leave me nor forsake me. The Lord is my light and my salvation. together in prayer. O Lord God, who has prepared for them that love you such good things as past man's understanding, pour into our hearts such love toward you that we, loving you above all things, may obtain your promises which exceed all that we can desire. We ask this through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, ever one God, eternally. Amen. Be seated for our first reading. Our first scripture reading this morning is found recorded in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 20, verses 7 to 13. The problem. The prophet Jeremiah finds himself under constant attack because he was proclaiming God's judgment upon the unfaithful people. Jeremiah would have liked to keep God's counsel to himself, but he couldn't, for God's word is in his heart like a burning fire. And so after a fierce inner struggle, Jeremiah comforts himself with the fact that the Lord was with him. His enemies, those who were persecuting him, would not prevail. And so Jeremiah ends with a song of praise to the Lord. We read God's word. O Lord, 
You induced me, and I was persuaded. You are stronger than I, and have prevailed. I am in derision daily. Everyone mocks me. For when I spoke, I cried out, I shouted, violence and plunder. Because the word of the Lord was made to me a reproach and a derision daily. Then I said, I will not make mention of him, nor speak any more in his name. But his word was in my heart like a burning fire, shut up in my bones. I was weary of holding it back, and I could not. For I heard many mocking, fear on every side. Report, they say, and we will report it. All my acquaintances watched for my stumbling, saying, perhaps he can be induced. Then we will prevail against him, and we will take our revenge on him. For the Lord is with me as a mighty, awesome one. Therefore, my persecutors will stumble and will not prevail. They will be greatly ashamed, for they will not prosper. Their everlasting confusion will never be forgotten. But, O Lord of hosts, you who test the righteous and see the mind and heart, let me see your vengeance on them, for I have pleaded my cause before you. Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord, for he has delivered the life of the poor from the hand of evildoers. Let's rise for our second reading. Our second reading is found recorded in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 10, verses 24 to 33. Like our Old Testament reading speaks of the hatred incurred by those who remain faithful to the word. So Jesus says it will happen also to the New Testament followers. But the worst that can happen to members of his kingdom is that the enemy kills the body. They cannot kill the soul. What a wonderful lesson to us to just keep on openly confessing Christ to a sin-filled and spiritually dead world. Don't be afraid. We read God's word. A disciple is not above his teacher, nor a servant above his master. It is enough for a disciple that he be like his teacher, and a servant like his master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebub, how much more will they call those of this household? Therefore do not fear them, for there is nothing covered that will not be revealed, and hidden that will not be known. Whatever I tell you in the dark, speak in the light. And what you hear in the ear, preach on the housetops. And do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. But rather fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a copper coin? And not one of them falls to the ground apart from your father's will. But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Do not fear, therefore, you are of more value than many sparrows. Therefore, whoever confesses me before men, him will I also confess before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, him I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. So far, our gospel reading. Praise be to Join confessing our Christian faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, 
the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Congregation right, may be seated. Let's rise. Grace and peace be unto you from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text for this morning's meditation and application to our daily faith life is found recorded in Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 5, verses 12 through 15, and verse 18. Therefore, just as through one man sin entered the world, and death through sin, and thus death spread to all men, because all sinned. For until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed where there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those who had not sinned according to the likeness of the transgression of Adam, who is a type of him 
who was to come. But the free gift is not like the offense. For if by the one man's offense many died, much more the grace of God and the gift by the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, abounded to many. Therefore, as through one man's offense judgment came to all men, resulting in condemnation, even so through one man's righteous act, the free gift came to all men, resulting in justification of life. So far as from the text. May be seated. In Christ Jesus, who by his righteousness gives us the free gift of life and salvation, dear fellow redeemed. For those of you who are old enough to remember the radio broadcaster Paul Harvey, you'll appreciate this morning's sermon theme. Now you know the rest of the story. The rest of the story was a radio broadcast hosted by Paul Harvey. It began that already back in World War II, and then it became a Monday through Friday series on the radio in 1976. The rest of the story consisted of stories presented about little known or obscure forgotten facts on a variety of subjects with some key element, like maybe some well-known person who said that, or maybe some surprising conclusion that was held back to the very end of the story. Then each of the radio broadcasts ends with Paul Harvey saying, and now you know the rest of the story. Well, the Apostle Paul didn't know Paul Harvey or the radio program, and yet he tells us our, about our salvation in much the same way. He begins our sermon text with the words, therefore, just as, then he concludes verse 18 with the words, even so. In Romans 4, the Lord the Apostle Paul tells us that Jesus gave us spiritual rescue when we were utterly spiritually without strength and power. In fact, we're told, while we were still sinners and ungodly, Christ came and died for us. We've been declared righteous, not guilty alone through Jesus' shed blood. And now in our text in Romans chapter 5, the Apostle Paul tells us of our desperate need for reconciliation. We live as sinners in a sinful world, all helplessly and hopelessly caught in a web of original sin. So Paul first describes a spiritual disease that infects every one of us and would be terminal if left to run its course. But then at the end he tells us the rest of the story. There's a cure a cure that is effective for every single person. <coughs> and so our theme in parts this morning is this. Now you know the rest of the story. Part one, just as through Adam's sin, death and judgment came upon all, so also through Christ's righteousness, the free gift of life and salvation came to all. Whenever you're reading through the Bible, and you come to the word therefore, don't just quickly skip over that. It's a very important word. When you get to a therefore, stop for a moment. Gather your thoughts. Something important is about to be said. In our vernacular, therefore could we say, you could say, heads up. This is important. Our text begins with a therefore. And so Paul says, now that I got your attention, I'm going to tell you how death and judgment came into this world. Adam sinned and brought death upon himself and all of mankind. All have sinned 
and therefore all die. Adam knew God's clear command to him. God said, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat, for in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. Yet he chose by the invitation of his wife to purposely disregard, disobey God's word and to do what he wanted to do. In so doing, he brought death and judgment upon all of mankind into this world. The floodgates of sin and its consequences inundated every single human being in this world. And unfortunately, the floodwaters of sin never recede. They just keep washing over us day after day after day until the day we die. We all know that sin came into the world by Satan, who rebelled against God. But the human father of sin is Adam. And since our father Adam sinned, all of his heirs have that inbred sin in them. It is passed down, medical scientists don't know how, it's passed down from father and mother to their children. So that flesh, the sinful nature, gives birth to flesh, the sinful nature. And that truth cannot be found in any neonatal book or any study on genetics, but that truth is taught very clearly in God's Word. The teaching of original sin, also called birth sin. The form of conquered, both in its epitome and thorough declaration, declares this damage of original sin is so unspeakable that it may not be recognized by a rational process, but only from God's word. And the thorough declaration declares it is something, original sin, that has to be learned and believed from the revelation of the scriptures. We see that's true today because there are some psychologists and many doctors today who say that every baby is born morally good. Or at the worst, morally neutral, like a clean slate. They only become sinful and immoral because of the immoral behavior and actions of others influencing him. There are churches today, Christian churches today, that say babies are not accountable or responsible for their sins till they get older. But God's word clearly says, sin entered the world through one man, and death through sin, and thus death spread to all men because all sin. Perhaps Paul was already anticipating an objection to the statement that he just made. An objection that would go something like this. Well, did everyone really sin like Adam? What about all those people before Moses and the giving of the Ten Commandments? Adam received a specific command from God. Don't eat of the fruit of the forbidden tree. Now is good and evil. But before Moses, there were no Ten Commandments. Specific commands given to them. All the people had was a natural law written in their heart. So can it really be said that they sinned like Adam sinned? Well, Paul answers that by saying, before the law was given, Sin was in the world. How do we know that? Paul tells us. Death reigned. The wages, the payment for sin is death. And death reigned from Adam to Moses. Yeah, they lived a long time. Some up to be 900 years old. But they all eventually died. Even babies died. Before the time of Moses. We see God's judgment upon man's sin in the flood, the changing of languages at the Tower of Babel, and Sodom and Gomorrah. 
Even though there was no specific commandments of God to point to and say, you broke this commandment, as he did with Adam and he does today with us, they still sinned. Because of the original sin they were conceived and born with. David clearly tells us that in Psalm 51, verse 5. Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, and in sin my mother conceived me. The Augsburg Confession writes, All who are naturally born are born with sin. That is, without the fear of God, without trust in God, and with an inclination to sin called concupiscence. It damns and brings eternal death on those who are not born anew. The history of every single Old Testament person, except for Enoch and Elijah, all ended with these words. And he died. And she died. All sin. Actual or original, commission or omission, sins of thought, word, or deed are all serious and all bring forth death. Adam fell and sinned, and all of Adam's descendants are fallen human beings, corrupted in sin, from the sinful seed of Adam. Adam. But now Paul tells us the rest of the story. He says, even as what Adam did affected every single person throughout the history of life, he is a type or a pattern of him who was to come. That is Jesus. In 1 Corinthians 15, verses 21 and 22, the Apostle Paul summarizes what he's telling us here in Romans chapter 5. In these two verses in 1 Corinthians 15, he writes, For since by man came death, by man also came the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ all shall be made alive. We go back to our, first, our two points this morning. Just as through Adam's sin, death and judgment came to all, even so through Christ's righteousness, the free gift of life and salvation came to all. Paul again writes in our text, But the free gift is not like the offense. For if by the one man's offense many died, much more the grace of God and the gift by the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, abounded to many. Therefore, as through one man's offense, judgment came to all men, resulting in condemnation, even so through one man's righteous act, the free gift came to all men, resulting in justification of life. Even as some of Paul Harvey's conclusions to the rest of the story were surprising and pretty shocking, no one could have imagined, could have fathomed, could have even thought of such an ending to man's condemnation. Even though every single one of us and every person ever conceived in this world deserve death and damnation, (coughs) the rest of the story is God has given us life and salvation as a free gift to the second Adam, Jesus Christ, and his righteousness. Verse 15, there are two very important words. Gift and offense. The gift that Christ brought is not like the offense that Adam committed and then brought into this world. Christ's gift is far greater, far more superior than anything that Adam's offense could ever do to us. Even as Paul drew a comparison between Adam and Jesus, 
Adam did something, it affected every single person. Jesus has done something, it affects every single person. Now I draw a contrast between the two. The gift of Jesus flows out to all in such a way that the guilt of all of our offenses is completely removed. And yes, even though the offense of Adam was terrible, it was inexcusable. It was a deliberate action to disobey God's command and it affected every single person. The gift of the second Adam, Jesus, removes the offense in every way. This is truly a gift from God. Nothing that we as Adam's descendants can ever take credit for. Free gift from the sacrificial death and victorious resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And if any of us are concerned that we're not part of the many listed in verse 15, Paul explains what he means by the many. We say there are many here this morning, but not all the members. He uses the word many meaning there's lots of them that are affected by this. Now he says, how many are affected? All people. Verse 18 again. Therefore, as through one man's offense, judgment came to all men, resulting in condemnation. Even so, through one man's righteous act, the free gift came to all men, resulting in justification of life. Just as one trespass on Adam's part affected every single person ever conceived in this world, so they all are sinners, there's a blessed counterpart to that by the blessed righteous act and sacrifice and resurrection of Jesus Christ is applied to all people. Because of what Christ has done for a world of sinners, God now looks at us and them as being holy and sinless. We sinners have done nothing to bring about this change. This change in our status is because of Christ. We can't appear holy before God on ourselves. It's impossible. We all have a sinful heart. Rather, in Christ, God looks at us as if we're holy, declaring us to be just and righteous and not guilty in His sight. We've got a new change status before God that brings life and salvation to all those who believe in Jesus. Who could have ever imagined or thought of such a remarkable rest of the story? Only God could have devised it. Only God could have planned it. Only God could have fulfilled it and carried it out. In concluding this morning's sermon, let's listen to a commentator named Matthew Henry who wrote on this section of Romans 5. He wrote, If there was so much power and efficacy in the sins of a man who was of the earth to condemn all of us, much more is there power and efficacy in the righteousness and grace of Christ who is the Lord from heaven to justify and save us. Surely Adam could not propagate so strong a poison so that Christ could not propagate so strong an antidote and much stronger. We are by Christ in his righteousness entitled to and given more and greater privileges than we lost by the offense of Adam. It's just as Adam's sin brought death and judgment upon me and you and all people, the free gift of life and salvation is ours, alone through faith in the second Adam, Jesus Christ, and his righteousness. So now you know the rest of the story. Amen.
The peace of God which passes understanding will keep your hearts and minds centered in our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Offering of our thankful hearts now be received.
my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to Thee. Take my moments and my days, let them flow in ceaseless praise. Take my love, my Lord, I pour at Thy feet. And I will be ever only all for Thee. Precious Jesus, you are the church's head because you washed and cleansed her with your own blood. We confess that because of our weak and sinful natures, we dearly sin and therefore dearly need forgiveness. Do not forsake us or cease to intercede for us with the Father. Restore the joy of everlasting salvation to all who trust in you. Give the Holy Spirit's power and aid to each believer that he may with boldness and confidence entrust himself, his whole life and his eternal salvation into your hands. Never doubting the fulfillment of all your promises. Help each believer to be faithful to your inspired word therefore restoring the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace to your church here on earth. Grant that your truth may triumph and attract us, attract to its side those who are still entangled in Satan's web of error. Give to the church leaders a special zeal for your word that they will abhor giving up a single truth, no matter how small and important it may appear to men. Make them wholly consecrated in their work of leading the souls of your precious lambs and sheep into heaven. Preserve them from serving the lusts and ambitions of their own flesh. Keep your church, which you have cleansed with your own blood, free from the power and influence of the devil and the world and our flesh. Let no Christian become weary of well-doing, but motivated by your own love, may we joyfully set about to obey your commandments Grant all Christians the grace to recognize the gifts and talents bestowed upon them by the Holy Spirit and direct their use in ways that will benefit the gospel and be of service to others. Fill every member of the church with the spirit of love, of self-sacrifice, and of mercy. Give each of us the courage to stand up for convictions anchored in the scriptures and to witness your saving name to a hostile world. Uplift and sustain us as on eagle's wings until the day when you transport us one by one from the church, church militant on earth to the church triumphant in heaven. We also come before you, Heavenly Father, on behalf of Jan Stelter, who has been ill for some time and is in St. Agnes Hospital, who received a blood transfusion. May you grant her healing as soon as you will allows. Also, prayers of thanksgiving for Oliver Thompson, born on June 21st, son of Andrew and Liz Thompson, members of Messiah in Milwaukee, who will soon be transferring here to the memorial. Pastor New Radical baptized Oliver on June 25th. He was received into the kingdom of God through the sacrament of baptism. We also thank you for the gospel message of salvation that our TVBS members, both at Peace Through Christ and here at Luther Memorial, handed out on Wednesday and Thursday. We've already received some responses. We thank you for the people who helped with this this distribution, and also for the gospel message that was given. O blessed Redeemer, hear us in all of these prayers. As we join together in praying the confident prayer you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive a believing hearts the blessing of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you 
and give to you his peace. Amen. 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 privilege to have this public exchange with Pastor Radical. I'd like to greet you from our members of the Peace Through Christ. I'd also like to thank members of Luther Memorial who came over on Wednesday and helped in the distribution of our Vacation Bible School flyers. Uh, we then afterwards went to Devil's Lake for an outing, and we came over here on Thursday and helped uh, your congregation with delivering flyers. I'd like to also thank the Lanaker family for opening their home on Lake Winnebago and letting us use their toys, their jet skis, and also their boat. It was indeed a very enjoyable time. Um, Pastor Radical asked me to then also turn the floor over to uh, Mr. Bernthal to give the other announcements. Um, we don't have too many announcements. There are some that you may want to look at in the bulletin, uh, especially the upcoming um, uh, seminar in our sister congregation in Batavia, Illinois. They're having a, a seminar on Bible revelation or human speculation. Uh, call news is also in the bulletin. Uh, other than that, um, I know Pastor Ruck, again, with the Traveling Vacation Bible School um, work, we do have uh, Vacation Bible School flyers on the table in the hallway, in the entryway. Uh, there's also a map on the wall there showing the areas that we cover. Um, all those homes are distributed to if you have some flyers you want to take to give to neighbors or friends, um, you can do that. They're available out there. Uh, as Pastor Bernthal said, we've already been getting responses, so it's wonderful to see the, uh, the work of the Holy Spirit um, through that message, that gospel message that was dropped off in their homes. Um, I think that might be about it. Also, when we, we look forward to coming again next year and helping out with uh, your TBBS as well. Oh, I guess I should say, too, thank you for, um, there's also wonderful blessings in, in seeing how not only we see that the Lord's uh, house is not built unless the Lord builds it, but also in maintaining of the Lord's property. Uh, and we'd like to offer thanks to all the people who came to help work on the teacher yesterday um, and the last few days. Uh, incredible amount of work has been done both inside. 
inside, outside, uh, on top of and underneath the house. Uh, it's incredible uh, the amount of work that's been going on. So uh, thank you to our Lord and through the efforts, of course, of our members. So. All for our former teacher, but we won't hold that against you.